Hello everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to Art Will We Speak. Today I'm very happy to be here with you. It's been an extremely busy week and I really look forward to practice some art and relax and distress and train my fine motor skills at the same time. Today we're going to do a beautiful practice with watercolors. Please, if you're new to this channel, consider to subscribe and consider to practice uh, the previous video that I published in this channel about watercolor technique. We usually use a three-step techniques, so drawing with pencil, defining the outline with the extra fine markers, and then painting inside with watercolors. So we, are, we learned in the past with these practices to control the amount of water, and we use a technique that was wet on dry, and sometimes almost dry on dry, right? Today we're going to lose it up uh, a little more, and we're going to move forward into another step in the practices with watercolors. So today we're gonna still use a watercolor paper, brush, cup with the water, uh, watercolor palette, any brand that you have available, it's more than fine. If you don't have all the colors that I have available, remember that you can mix and do the color. I encourage you to go back to my first video. So that is one that is about the painting the watercolors together, the watercolor wheel, sorry, together with watercolors. So that is extremely useful and it will be your, uh, Step number one. Then today we're going to kind of ignore and skip the pencils. So we're not going to do any definition of the images, any designing, sketching, drawing. We're going to immediately work with the watercolor directly on paper. We're going to use like sometimes a triple three, uh, dip, so water watercolor and water again to make sure that we have enough water on the brush and we're going to start to kind of let it go and let the water do its job and kind of embrace the surprise and the unexpected things that might happen. This practice is must, must, uh, much shorter than the previous one. Sorry, today is one of the day. As I said, it was a very tiring week. So my brain is like, you know, try to cope with the three languages that I, you know, they bounces in my brain all the time. Anyway, all the materials are listed in the description box. Get yourselves ready. You can practice with me, pause in the video, prep the materials and then do the practice with me. Or you can watch the video first and then do the practice at your own time, at your own pace. You can even practice more than one time with the same video, changing maybe the color palette or the type of the strokes that you want to have on your paper. I'm going to switch to the camera so we can follow each other. You can follow my hands and hear my voice and uh, let's have some fun together. Okay, for this technique, as we say, we are not going to trace anything with a pencil and we're going to start immediately with our brush, with the water and with our, wa our watercolors. Remember that you can make your own choices. You don't have to use the same color palette that I use. And if you don't have so many colors available, you can mix and you can create more just by using the primary and secondary, creating tertiary and then take it from there. So. I will start just taking like prepping some colors so mixing the water with the palette and then when I have a nice texture and this time you want to add the brush a little like more wet than the other practice that we did we are going to just like touch gently the paper shaping the petals of our flowers remember that they are just basically marks that we are doing on the paper using the brush. So they are basically brush strokes on the paper. We are not designing anything specific and we kind of let the water do its job making our brush a little more wet than we did in the past. You can make as many as you want. If you think that you want it a little more wet and you want like the, the water be able to do its job its job on the paper and blend it you can you can you know try different type of strokes you can kind of do some strokes here and there the more the better i'm gonna take again that pink mix it with another you can create your color palette you just to rotate the position of your brush. If you want to change a brush, if you want to try with a rounded brush and see what happens, you're going to pick same or different color, put the brush again in the water 
and then gently tap. You see now the shape of the petal is going to be a little different because the brush is smaller and give us a different type of strokes on the paper. Let's keep going. You have fun. You can, this is, I want to wet it more. You kind of really barely add any pressure on that paper. <laughs> you leave it nice. I'm gonna switch. Let's see. Let's have a little complimentary here. We're gonna add some blue. Gonna have fun in creating different shapes. You see of the petal. It's just like a matter of different type of brush strokes. We don't want something that is super size. We're gonna first add all the colors that we would like to see on our flower. And then we can um, think about the green that we are gonna add for the leaves, the stem, right? We can create any little drops. Let's wet it a little more. We are learning how to control the water and understand really how much water do we really want. And this time, as you see, we are getting like a little more confident in this in the use of the water and. We don't really care about controlling it so much as we did in the other practices. When we said that we had a design, we outlined the design, and then we kind of uh, painted inside the different spaces in our design. This time we are going to move a step forward, right? It's still a technique of a wet on dry because my paper and your paper is still dry but definitely there is a little more water in the brush now that we have some flowers you're gonna start to add some green of the stems and then we're gonna do leaves please don't worry if the lines that you are tracing because it's basically a nice long and light brush strokes if your lines are not so thin it is totally normal, mostly if you are a beginner or if you are a young student learning the technique. Just go touch and barely, barely touch the paper and bring it down. You will learn with the time, so don't worry. Remember that art, like everything else, is a matter of practice. The more you practice, the better your fine motor skills will be trained. So the more reliable is going to be the result, the more consistent because you control, you have more control of what you do. You can play with different type of green. We're not like a worry about representing a specific kind of flower that you can do that as well. Once you become a little more expert, you can actually go out, take pictures of beautiful flowers and then work with the picture, try to represent a specific uh, uh, flower. But now we are just kind of focusing on the process more than the product. So feel free to paint any flower that you want, any shape of the leaves. As you see, I'm not really precise this time as we did it like uh, previously. I just want to fill this space nicely with leaves, different sizes, different green just to fulfill basically the space that we have available. If you're working on a bigger space, of course, you might want to um, add some more flowers or more leaves or just do whatever I did here bigger. Remember that this time we are trying to keep the brush always nice and wet. So. If you're feeling it that it's a little too dry, just don't wait and dip it in the water even after you dip it in the color. So sometimes we do a triple dip, water, color, and then water again. And 
as you can see, I'm not doing anything super perfect, so let it go. And don't worry at all about the perfect shape of these leaves. Actually, the less perfect, the better, because they will look more natural, more organic, and you will give the painting this sense of movement, right? And lightness, if we can say like, you know, if we can say like this, sometimes you know that I tend to translate from the way that I would think in Italian and I translate it in Spanish and in English. So bear with me. And now we are going to do the brush strokes. We did this type of brush strokes also in the past for the other project. Remember, if you didn't get a chance to practice with me, as I say in the introduction, I highly encourage you to do so. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. But you just like a barely touch and go, like touch and release, touch and release, very, very, very gently, no pressure at all. This is a wonderful exercise and I invite you to repeat it as much as you need to be able to create the strokes that you have in mind. Sometimes we could feel pages just with different type of strokes and that is a wonderful exercise not only because it's a very mindful practice, because you have a non-objective, right? It's going to be completely abstract and you focus only on the brush strokes, but because the more we do something, the better we become. You can overlap a little bit this thin brush stroke to make the picture more vivacious, right? And a little like... more energized with all these tiny little strokes. Now we can do details inside the flowers if you want by choosing a darker color that it could be like a dark brown, a black, whatever you think is going to be the right color for the center of your flower. In this case, we use the very tip of the brush and we want to make sure that in this case, we control the water just slightly more than we did with the petal because maybe we don't want the black to expand all over the petals, right? We want to keep it nice at the center. So we are going to work with a little less water and we can control the brush more and the water, of course on the design. Now I want to add some yellow in the background just to light up the picture. But if you want, you can use a blue instead, depending on what is the feeling that you want to have from your painting. I'm going to wet the brush again, so triple dip water color and then back in the water and I'm gonna fulfill some of the spaces with the yellow. I'm gonna take a little more water actually because I wanted to loosen it up a little bit. If the yellow overlap some of the petals that at this point should be dry, it is totally okay. So actually as we say in this practice we lose up a little bit more and we want to have a little less control, right? We want to be uh, open to a possibility and see what happened in our paper. It's still a wet and dry, but a little like more water, less definition of the shapes because we didn't define anything at the beginning, right? You see, it's just happened. Then some of the yellow went on next to the blue, so I had some green. I really love it. We embrace it. We don't want something static and too perfect because it's going to be just a pretty picture, right? But no interest, uh, no energy will be transferred to the viewer or to you that you're looking at your piece once it's done. We want to make sure that really we embrace the unexpected that comes with this beautiful media and with the, we let the water kind of do its job and surprise us a little bit. As you notice, uh, this practice is also extremely faster, right, than the other practices that we did before. But to me, it is important, as I always do in the school with my students, it's important to build a strong foundation. 
So sometimes you also start from a practice that might look a little more complicated to then like uh, uh, enjoy practices that are a little more spontaneous. But I feel that building strong foundation, it's important because you build confidence in beginner artists, in students. And so then you can really move into different practices and challenge yourself and explore and experiment with the media without like fearing the failure or without, you know, having unrealistic expectations on ourselves, but kind of embracing the process and the practice as it is. And I feel that it is really, really joyful. Now, you can leave the piece like this if you want and if you have an extremely fine, extra fine. This is a 03, so it's pretty fine. You can even use a 01 uh, micro markers. You can do very loose line of contours. Or you can leave it exactly as the watercolor like her uh, absorbed in the paper and the color palette that you create. I'm going to leave mine as it is. And maybe in the next one instead, we can do loose outline so I can show you the process. I'm going to switch the camera so we can say goodbye. Okay, friends, I hope you had fun as much as I did. This was a very nice and short practice. My watercolor are still kind of drying, so make sure that you pay attention and you don't close the journal if you're working in a journal. Just let it set and let it dry. Next week, we're going to do a similar practice because I feel that with each technique, two or three, more like a three, more likely like three practices are uh, a good number to give you... Uh, good foundations and to make you feel more like uh, confident uh, and comfortable in using a specific media in a specific technique. So next time we're going to try something different, a different composition, and we let it dry together. And then we're going to do the loose outline. So I'm going to show you the difference and you will be able to compare and contrast. Please consider to subscribe to my channel. Mostly if you enjoy this practice, I highly encourage you, if you're new to this channel, to practice also my other previous uh, practice with watercolor. So you're going to really be build a good foundation and uh, you're going to have a lot of fun in creating your pieces. Now, I wish uh, everybody a great day and I hope to see you all soon next week. Ciao a tutti!